All right. Happy Wednesday, church family. I hope that you're all doing well. I hope that God is moving in and through your lives. Um, This Wednesday, we're going to do something a little different from what we tend to do. Um, Throughout the last month or so, I've been talking to some new believers and some people that um, are Christians and and really love the Lord, but are really intimidated um, by the Word. I mean, the Bible itself is a pretty big book um, that consists of 66 books and a little under 1,200 chapters. So for new believers, even for believers like me that have been doing this, you know, have been walking with the Lord for a while, sometimes this gets a little intimidating on, well, how do you approach it? You know, how do you decide what you're going to read? What does studying the Bible look like? I don't think any of us would... um, would say that the Bible isn't important for us. I think that we all know the importance of Scripture in the life of the believer. In one of the Gospels, Jesus even tells a parable um, about two men who build houses on two different foundations. And he likens the man who builds his house on a solid foundation to the believers that build their lives on the Word of God. So the Word is extremely important for the life of believers. It's it's extremely important for my life. It's extremely important for your life. But sometimes this can get quite intimidating, especially if you're if you're new to the faith and you just don't know what studying the Bible looks like. You don't know where to start. Or even if you've been a Christian for a while and are just struggling with really getting something from Um, from the Bible. And so what I want to do today is I just want to talk about one way um, to study the Bible. It's not the only way, it's not the best way, but it's one way that's worked um, really well for me, and I hope that it'll work really well for you guys, Um, especially if you're in that place where you just don't know how to approach um, the Bible and and get into it and study it. Um, So let's just jump right in. So This study is based on three questions, and you can do this with any passage of Scripture that you read. Um, So as you read the Scripture, I want you to think of three questions while you're reading, and that is, what does the Scripture say about who God is, His character, His personality, His desires? So that's question one, is what does the Scripture say about who God is? Second, what does the Scripture tell us about who people are? What does it tell us about people? What does it tell us about who we are, our character, our personality, our tendencies? And then the last question um, that I want you to think about as as you're going through um, the passage is just to think about what is God calling me to do? Based on what I've read about who God is, who we are, What is God calling me to do? Um, What is God calling me to start doing? Or what is God calling me to stop doing? So with those three questions in mind, I do just want to read through a passage of Scripture and just walk through um, what this practically looks like. And I know for me, when I do this at home, what helps me is to, to have a notebook or a journal or a piece of paper handy and literally just write out those questions what does it say about God? And then leave space for, for God to respond and, and speak through His Word. What does it say about people? And then leave space for God to speak about people. And then lastly, what is God calling me to start doing? What is God calling me to stop doing? Um, what is God calling me to do based on what I've read? And just leaving space um, so that God can speak to us. And I think one thing that that does for me um, as far as writing that stuff down is it it helps me to go into Bible study. It helps me to go in to approaching the Scripture with an anticipation and expectation that God's going to speak to me. Um, And then secondly, when God speaks to me, by writing it down when I Later in the week when I think, well, what was God telling me then? I can go back and I can look at that. So what I'd like to do is just simply go through a passage of Scripture and do this together. Um, So I'm going to do 1 Samuel chapter 16, and we're going to do verses 33 through 47. And it says this, 
And Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are but a youth, and he has been a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And when there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and struck him and delivered it out of his mouth. And if he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and struck him and killed him. Your servant has struck down both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them. For he has defied the armies of the living God. And David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Then Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a helmet of bronze on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. And David strapped his sword over his armor, and he tried to go in vain, for he had not tested them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not tested them. So David put them off. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the brook and put them in the shepherd's pouch. His sling was in his hand, and he approached the Philistine. And the Philistine moved forward and came near to David with his shield-bearer in front of him. And when the Philistine looked and saw David, He disdained him, for he was but a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. And the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the dead bodies of the hosts of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air, and to the wild beasts of the earth, that are all that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord saves not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and He will give you into our hand. And as you guys know, if you're familiar with the story, David goes on to defeat Goliath by slinging a stone and hitting Goliath right between the eyes. So what I want to do now is just walk back through our story and think of those three questions I talked about earlier. What do we learn about God? What do we learn about people? And what is God calling me to do? What is He calling me to start doing or stop doing? What is He calling me to start believing or stop believing. So let's tackle the first question. What do we learn about God from this passage? I think the first thing that we see is that God doesn't look at people the way that we tend to look at people. When David said, I'll go do this, Saul's immediate response was, you can't do this. You're too young. You're too small. You're too ruddy. But God saw something in David. God knew that he could use David to overcome this giant. So I think the first thing that we see is that God views things a lot differently than we tend to. Um, He views things in light of what he can do, in light of what he can accomplish. The second thing that I think we learn about God is that the battle's His, right? God is King. God is Lord. The battle is His. He's in control. He's in charge. Um, and, and the victory is, is His. 
Um, and the second thing, I mean, the third thing I think that we see is that God uses people that we wouldn't think he would use. Um, people to accomplish amazing things that don't necessarily look like they can accomplish what he's called them to. God qualifies the people that he calls. So that's the, that's the answer to our first question. What, what do we learn about God from our passage? So let's go on to the next question, the second question, which is what do we learn about people? I think there's a lot that we can learn about people from this, from this passage. Um, the first being is that we tend to look at things for the way they look in front of us. Um, we tend to look at the physical um, instead of the spiritual or, or what's going on as a whole, right? This, was, this is where Saul was. He looked at David, right? Even the Philistine was in this place where he looked at David and there was, he couldn't process how David was going to accomplish this feat. And when David came up before the Philistine, before Goliath, Goliath said the same thing. What is this that you send someone this small, this ruddy, out to me with sticks? Am I a dog? So we tend to look at things through what we can see or what we can understand. Um, and the second thing I think that we see is that people are called to do amazing things with God's help. Um, David on his own, couldn't accomplish this feat. Um, but David was called to step in, to step up to the battle line and to go into war and to deliver Israel in this way. And God used him um, to do that. Um, and I think that the, the second thing, I mean, the third thing that we see about people um, is that we're called to trust in God. Um, we're called to trust the God who created us. It's what we're created for, um, to live and to strive um, to do um, what God's calling us to do and trust that he's going to come through for us when we step out in faith and do that. And I think you see that in David as he steps up to the battle line. He's got a complete trust that God is going to God is going to bring him through. And that's what he proclaimed to Saul. That's what he proclaimed to the Philistine. The Lord will deliver um, this Philistine into my hand. So lastly, based on what we read, I want to tackle the, the third question is that and that is what is God calling me to do? What, is there something that God's calling me to start doing? Is there something God's calling me to stop doing? Is there something God's calling me to start believing? And is there something God's calling me to stop believing? And I think for me, the biggest thing that, that stands out to me in this passage is, for me, um, God speaking to me, is that God's calling me to stop believing everyone, what everyone, who everyone else tells me that I am. Um, there were a lot of people telling David who David was in this passage. Um, there were a lot of people trying to impose on David um, things about who they thought David was. And the reality is, is that David couldn't accomplish what God called him to accomplish in this passage if David wasn't himself. Um, if it, David wasn't the man that God created David to be. And I think a lot of times for me in my life, that's an, that's an easy thing to do. Believe and start to define myself by the way the world or everyone around me tells me um, who I am or what I look like or what I need to do. And I think one of the things that God's calling me to stop believing in this passage is stop believing who the world defines me to be. The second thing that I think God is saying to start doing um, for me, for God speaking to me, is, is to start stepping up to the battle line. There are things that God desires to do in my life that God's calling me to step up and take that step forward, trust in Him, and move forward with what He's called me to. So guys, th that's it. It's a look at this passage. Um, I, I hope that this is helpful to you. 
um, to just think about what do we learn about God? What do we learn about people? And what is God calling me to do based on the passage that we just read? And I, I do hope that this is beneficial for those of you that are just intimidated and just unsure how to approach the Word or study the Bible. Um, again, it's, it's nothing um, super out there, right? It's something that's very approachable, something that's very simple. Um, but I do believe that God will move and speak um, through this process. And I just encourage you guys that if you're in that place where you just don't know what Bible study looks like, or you're just intimidated with this big book that is so important to our Christian walk, I just encourage you guys to just give this a try, see how it works. Um, and I hope God speaks to you. I hope God changes you. I hope God moves in and through your lives as you get into His Word and as you begin to build your life on His Word. So I hope you guys have a great week. I love you guys, and I can't wait to see you Sunday.